Hello again everybody, hope you're all doing well. So I've not had much chance to get out and about recently, mostly because of the weather. It's been pretty cold, we've got quite a bit of snow still here in this part of the Czech Republic and also the temperatures are well in the minus figures. We're in minus 7 today and it can go to about minus 20 odd give or take so naturally I'm staying indoors in the warm as much as I possibly can. Uh, but the other day I came across this rather intriguing little vehicle and I thought for a bit of a change we will have a little look at this together and I can just sort of give my thoughts and opinions on um, the specs and everything else that they're claiming and yeah we can just sort of see what it's all about. So the bike we're looking at is the Volcon Grunt and this is a all electric motorcycle and right off the bat it's definitely one of those ones that's going to divide opinions quite drastically. Um, now obviously most more conventionally styled motorcycles people will either like them, not like them as much or maybe not be particularly one way or the other about them. But this bike kind of reminds me of my own bike, the Suzuki Van Van, uh, in that <clears throat> its styling and everything else is very out there. It's very different. It's very rugged and practical, but it's definitely not going to be to everybody's tastes. So it's, it is going to be one of those bikes that you either love it or hate it. Uh, and in fact, I've seen a couple of people already commenting on this bike. Some people saying they think it looks really cool. Other people saying it looks absolutely horrendous. Why would you want such a thing? So already those kind of divided opinions are showing. Now, I personally am quite a big fan of these very different, very rugged, very quirky looking bikes. Uh, obviously, you know, I love my Suzuki Van Van, so that's, that's just my kind of um, thing. But before we get to into the bike itself. Let's just quickly talk about Volcon themselves. So Volcon are a, um, a Texas startup. They are quite new. Basically their whole thing is they want to be the Tesla of the ADV power sports um, sector. So they're looking to dominate the off-road electric vehicle uh, category and so far there's not a huge amount of information on these guys so they've got the Facebook pages the Twitter and everything else and they've got their website here but there's not a massive amount about them you can go onto the about section here and uh, it tells you a bit of a bit about their um, philosophy or their goal yeah see here's our mission build highest quality electric vehicles to enhance the outdoor experience yeah, work, play, dominate. Yeah, as I say, there's not a massive amount here. You can get in contact with them and ask questions, obviously, but it's quite a, quite a minimalistic website at the minute, and they're just. I mean, in some ways, I quite like that actually because they're just sticking to the points they're confident about, and they're not trying to bog people down with too much information. That's fine. Uh, the only other things we know about them is that they had a very successful crowdfunding. Um, campaign they reached their goal very very quickly and in fact their goal was just to get the money together to actually start production so they'd already made the prototypes they'd already tested everything extensively they just needed to basically get the funding together to get this stuff produced and get it actually um, to market so just quickly again before we go on to the actual um, bike itself there are four vehicles that they are um, looking to make. Now the bike, well, there's actually two bikes, there's the Grunt and the Runt. They are near enough the same bike with a few minor differences, but one's more powerful than the other. Uh, but that's that's just the bikes. Now those are supposedly coming out, they're already available on pre-order, and they're supposed to be coming out in the next couple of months actually being shipped. Uh, moving on from that later on this year, they're looking to start uh, producing and shipping out the Stag, which is this thing, uh, just an off-road buggy, obviously again all electric and everything else, and then they've got the Beast, which is kind of like a cross between a, an off-road buggy and it's got a bit of a truck bay in the back as well, so it's kind of like it's a utility vehicle sort of thing. Um, but as I say, we're not looking at those today. We're going to specifically look at the Grunt because this is the one that you can actually pre-order right now. And it's the one that sort of caught my eye as being interesting. So let's let's go down to another picture of it. So here it is. Here is the Volcon Grunt. And as I say, it's styling wise, is very similar to the Suzuki Van Van in a lot of ways. Um, now, it's very boxy which is quite an interesting design choice, but I don't think that's actually too bad. I do quite like 
that you've got some relatively boxy elements but then you've got these kind of nice sweeping elements to the frame as well which kind of it doesn't i don't think it looks too bad as i say it's going to divide a lot of opinions this one but i i think i i've always liked the, the very utilitarian very rugged sort of designs uh, of this type of bike um and you've also got i mean the wheels these look like kind of steel wheel type things very strong very sturdy designed to take a lot of beating so um that's an interesting little thing there as well i don't know what they're actually made of they might still be um, an alloy in fact i'm sure they probably are but it does kind of look a bit like a steel rim doesn't it um you've also got this uh obviously this whole front section is is basically protected it's almost like uh it's got a massive um bash plate but that in fact is just all incorporated into the bodywork which is obviously there to protect the batteries and everything else uh but otherwise it's a very simple bike there's nothing particularly um crazy about it it's it's bare bones utilitarian gets the job done type thing you know you've got a frame uh you know batteries and a motor rather than an engine and then that's basically it nice and simple uh so let's have a little look at the specifications so for the grunt it looks to have about 50 horsepower well, it says up to 50 horsepower right i should explain that so the bike has several different driving or riding modes that you can switch between and when it says up to 50 that means that in its most powerful mode it's got 50 horsepower but you are able to reduce that power if for example you're a newer rider and you want to get used to the power before you whack it open to full or maybe depending on the type of terrain you're riding over you might want to dial down the responsiveness of the bike um so that it doesn't skid out too much basically you've just got the options there of dialing it up or down depending on what you're using it for or your own preferences um 75 foot pounds of torque it's pretty decent got to remember that electric motors they produce all of their power pretty much right at the very beginning which is obviously something that gives them an advantage over petrol bikes because any petrol engine has to spin up to a certain rpm before it produces its peak power whereas these electric vehicles they have that power straight away so they've got a good amount of go to them and that that sort of pulling power is going to be quite useful because they're marketing this bike as a fun toy yes but they're also marketing it as something that you can genuinely use around the farm or something so you've got this rack on the back um i'm sure they've got a load of accessories and i'm pretty sure a load of aftermarket accessories will become available for this pretty quickly um but you know they're marketing it as a as a very um, real option for uh, a bike for around the farm for doing you know everyday jobs and things like that as well. So having all that low down power is going to be quite useful. Uh, not to sixty six seconds. That's pretty good. You know, bearing in mind this is a bike that's you know size wise about the same as a small kind of almost like a monkey bike maybe a 125 or a 250 but it's not like it's not a big bike and if you think six seconds not to 60 you know a, a super bike some super bikes might do not 60 and half that time but that's still a really impressive figure for for what this is for what it's designed like and and what it's actually designed to be you know the 0 to 60 isn't necessarily the most important factor for a vehicle like this but that's still quite good <clears throat> now top speed of 60 miles an hour i have the impression that you could probably change that because around 50 horsepower and 75 foot pounds of torque i imagine this thing's probably actually capable of more than that i think that 60 mile an hour top speed is probably a limitation that they have programmed into the controller and if you were to go into the controller and change that programming i'm pretty sure you can make the bike go faster i'm guessing that the reason they've done that is probably because again this bike isn't about top speed or anything like that it's about uh sort of lower speed fast accelerating yes but lower speed torque and pulling power um i'm guessing mostly though it's probably for safety reasons because these kind of tires and this kind of design i know that on the van van even the 200 it only goes about 70 miles an hour and i think it is i mean with the with the van van it's partially a limitation of the power of the engine anyway 
but I think also it's because these big balloon tires, they're low pre- low pressure, um, usually tubed as well. I don't know if these are. I think these might actually be tubeless, but these low pressure big tires generally aren't designed to go very fast top speed wise. Um, I don't know how well they perform at higher speeds. So it may, I mean, I could be entirely wrong on this one, but it seems to me like it's a possibility that they probably just have limited the top speed just for safety reasons i mean you've also got to remember it's quite a small bike it's quite a light bike um you know going too much faster probably wouldn't be as safe as well because you think a lot of bikes that go faster tend to be a bit heavier bigger heavier uh, the handling characteristics are obviously different so i'm going to go ahead and guess that top speed is limited and that it's because of the handling and a variety of other considerations that they obviously decided to do that but as I say in the long run I could end up being wrong and I do certainly think that if you were that way inclined you could quite easily just go into the controller and program it to give you a few extra miles an hour relatively easily with that kind of power output I certainly would expect you could get it up to 70 or 80 miles an hour because you know 50 50 horsepower that's that's on par with a uh, uh, an early to mid 2000s 500cc twin cylinder bike like a Kawasaki ER5 or a, you know a Suzuki um what was it I can't remember the EN500 or whatever it was that that's the kind of that's the kind of power um that you're looking at it's about the same as a 500 so you know, it's certainly got the grunt there. Uh, what else have we got? Ground clearance of 12 inches, very low. So obviously, if you're a shorter rider, you're not going to have any issues there. Now, this is what I find quite intriguing. We've got 100 miles top range. Uh, yeah, a, a range of up to 100 miles, which is pretty damn good. But what's even more impressive is if we go down here, we've got some more um, information on it. Uh, I can't remember where I read this. In actual fact, now I've completely lost the um, the part where I found it. But basically, I've read that this will completely charge the battery in about two hours, which is pretty fast. But more impressive than that, it charges off of a standard home socket. So we're not talking about like you know a proper vehicle charging port or anything we're talking about two hours to charge the battery from basically dead to full on your standard home electrics now that to me seems quite um optimistic like a lot of vehicles do have fast charging and they're quite thingy but we're talking about something that's got a claimed range of 100 miles and it only takes two hours to charge it on regular home electrics now i'm not saying that's impossible and you know I'm, I'm sure they probably have managed that and if they have that's really really impressive but it's one of those things that i think i will remain skeptical about until it's been um you know a few people who have owned one for a little while uh and done their own little sort of reviews and stuff on it have actually confirmed that because it does seem to me a little bit too good to be true. I mean, maybe, again, that's just me being a bit behind the times. Maybe technology has advanced so much by this point that actually, you know, that kind of capacity charging that quickly on your regular home socket is, is entirely possible. I don't know. But I, I, th- I feel like with electric vehicles uh, especially, a lot of the specifications have to be taken with a little bit of a pinch of salt, especially uh, range, because... Whenever a electric vehicle company say up to 100 miles, well, you know, what conditions is that based on? Is that based on it basically running on a rolling road in, um, you know, a warehouse with no wind, no resistance, no nothing? Uh, you know, what are the actual figures out on the road taking into account a couple of hills every now and again, uh, wind resistance, rider weight, all this other stuff, you know? It's, I mean, I get it. It's it's difficult to put a actual, um, you know, realistic figure on it because you just don't know. Everyone weighs different. Uh, you know, people have different weights. People ride in different conditions. You know, you can't predict everything. But um, 
it just seems like you know with electric vehicles as opposed to petrol driven vehicles those figures tend to be a bit more kind of varied uh, or, or you have to take them with a bit more pinch of salt than than their petrol counterparts but even so you know from what they're claiming this could turn out to be a really really quite impressive really good little bike if you know you're into the styling obviously you know if you're one of these people looking at it going oh my god this is absolutely hideous then you're never gonna be convinced otherwise but if like me you're looking at this thinking actually that looks pretty cool then it could well be a decent little bike to to own and i'm i'm sort of looking at this thinking okay range up to 100 miles realistically let's call that 60 or 70 if you don't drive it like an absolute maniac then okay that's not too bad um especially when you think this bike you're not really going to buy it as like a i mean you might buy it as a commuter you might buy it to like go to school on or something but generally speaking you are going to be buying this for having a bit of fun off road or uh you know just playing around on the farm or something uh the batteries i did forget to mention the batteries are hot swappable as well so you can buy the bike and buy separate batteries so when you do run out you can stick the other ones on charge stick the uh, spare ones in and then two hours later the ones you originally depleted are charged anyway so you can pretty much just keep the thing going constantly which is quite cool uh, but the biggest thing i think is the price this to me is just incredible because i mean it says starting at you know just under six thousand dollars Obviously, that's because you can opt to buy, you know, the spare batteries and all this kind of stuff. But just for the basic bike with one battery pack and and everything you need to ride it is a, just under six thousand dollars. And as I say, that to me is quite incredible because electric vehicles are still very, very expensive because they're expensive to produce. They're they're a new technology. Things are always more expensive when they first come out. They haven't had time to get cheap and more affordable yet. Um, so the fact that we've got here a bike with, well, seemingly very good performance at that kind of price, because this this kind of price is what you'd expect to pay for a 125 or a 250 uh, petrol bike new. And even then, that would be one at the lower end of the scale. You'd be looking at quite a budget um bike for this price but as i say here you've got something that's got the power of a 500 cc potentially a good range a top speed which is okay and i'm pretty sure can be increased and yeah generally for that well as i say for that price it's almost unbelievable i'm not entirely sure how because they could easily have made this at least a couple of grand more expensive you know if, if this bike sat here at 6995 or 7995 people would still be ordering it so i think it's quite good actually that they are doing it at the price they are doing it um now i think i've gone over everything i can find about this bike the only other thing worth mentioning is the fact that it is waterproof so uh, apparently all their vehicles all the electrics and powertrains are ip67 rated so they're fully waterproof uh, so basically you don't have to worry about pressure washing them or driving it through a small river it, it's it is just designed to be a rugged little thing and even you know from the name of it they're calling it the grunt they're kind of going for that sort of army um you know outdoor rugged sort of naming as well so yeah it's a very interesting little vehicle i thought just wanted to show, share this with you guys because obviously it caught my eye and you know i do know a few of you out there will find this rather intriguing and as i say some of you might find it absolutely horrendous but it was just uh good to have a little look at it what i will do just quickly before we end though is show you um the other version so this obviously is the grunt this is the more powerful version uh if we just go on to this we also have the runt uh which is quite aptly named because as you can see it, it's it's much cheaper looking it's much um well much cheaper in general anyway this basically is the kids version so this is actually um designed 
it's it's the grunt but it's a scaled down version and this is the sort of thing that you would give to your kids as their first bike or whatever to play around the yard or um you know join you say you got the grunt and got your kids the runt uh you know you can go off together and tear up the trails but yeah i mean if you look at the specs of this it's like 35 mile an hour top speed only got a 35 mile range though which is unfortunate but again this is i mean you can even tell by the styling of it this is much more of a toy um than uh obviously the grunt is but again it's for, for what it is it's quite a fun little bike i mean two thousand well nearly three thousand dollars yeah it's a little bit on the expensive side for a what is basically a kid's toy but at the same time it is still a proper motor, electric motorcycle it's not like um it's not like one of those actual electric kids motorbike things that they buzz around on like the the ones you get for three-year-olds this is actually a proper machine it's just a scaled down version um which you know could be a lot of fun and could also be a fantastic way of getting your kids into motorcycles but yeah i just just thought we'd have a quick look at that since we were looking at the grunt anyway we'd have a quick look at the runt but let's get back on to that one no no where's it gone that's the beast <laughs> but anyway there you go guys as i say i just wanted to sort of share my thoughts with you as to what i thought of this bike and um yeah hopefully you enjoyed this little video if you did please do give it a like if you haven't already please do subscribe to the channel go check out my other videos um obviously i'm not going to get a chance to really do many actual riding reviews anytime soon because obviously we've got covid and things like that going around uh the weather's pretty bad and also because i've moved to another country it's kind of difficult for me to get out and do test rides because um we do have the bike dealerships around here but the and there's a few bike shops around where i live but um the actual dealerships where i can go and test ride bikes are quite far away it's like an hour and a half drive away from here so i will endeavor to do so in the future but for now my videos are obviously gonna be more all the maintenance stuff all the rides around all the scenery um talking about various things i do some point in the future want to do a um, restoration project on something but we'll see how we go with that um so obviously there's plenty to look at on the channel at the minute i will be making more videos very very soon uh if you did like this video particularly or if you want me to do some more videos like this looking at bikes that are coming out or bikes that are available and just sort of giving my uh personal opinions and things like that on them let me know in the comments section and i can do more uh, obviously this is quite a nice video to be able to do when the weather's really bad outside so if you do enjoy this sort of thing then um do let me know in the comment section below. But uh, for now, guys, obviously, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all again soon.